part two of the interactive birthday card. Part one, we did adding some sprites and the background. We already got that done. Now it's come part two. We're gonna add more sprites plus user input. We're gonna do user input, which is basically the user, whoever's viewing it, can click on stuff and you can watch stuff appear and disappear or shake and rotate and etc. All right, so first let's get more sprites. We only have three sprites right now. So I wanna have a big one. Let's have another birthday cake. So when we're doing this video, I wanna make it so that when you click on the birthday cakes, when you click on the cakes, you can eat them. So like they disappear, like they're eating them. And then after you eat both of them, once you eat the second one, a birthday cake appears, okay? And then you can do shake and open the present. I'll do that later, okay? First, I already got my birthday cake sprite in. And if you don't know how to add sprite, you just go new animation, click your object, then click the check mark and click done. All right, now that I got it, let's go ahead and define it. So variable cake equals, now where do you want it to be? I want it to be somewhere over here at like 173 to 83 or something like that. All right, now let's set the sprite to the actual cake. So cake is gonna set animation to birthday cake. And so that it doesn't get way too big, we're gonna shrink it so that it looks big. I mean, makes sense. A cupcake is shorter than an actual birthday cake. So I'm gonna put it 0 0.5 or something like that. Let's try it. How about 0 0.45? Yeah. Something like that. So let's make it, put the Y position a bit lower. So 290 or something, or higher, sorry. If we try 300, that'll work. Yes, that works. All right. Now, now what do you notice here? We want so that only the cakes appear, not right now, but only when you eat these two or click on these two, they appear. So what I'm gonna do is here it says visible, sprite visible. And if you remember my Python videos from long back, you know Boolean expressions where you can set things that true or false. So here we're gonna do cake visible. I don't want this to appear now, so we're gonna do false. And look, look, it just doesn't appear. And it's still there in the sprite menu, but it's just not here now when you appear. So now let's add more sprites to just make it. Let's add present. So let's add like a dog or something. Like so for a present. I'm gonna choose the brown dog. All right, and let me add something else. Let's add party. Let's add a party sticker. Perfect. Now let's get these sprites defined. Dog. Now obviously I want the dog. Let's make the dog at somewhere here. So 283, 150. Or 285, 150. And of course we're gonna set the dog to the actual dog, brown dog. Now dog scale. We're gonna size it to be 0 0.2, let's say 0 0.35. Now, let's do the same thing. And now we don't want the dog to be visible at the start. So we're gonna do dog visible and false, false. Now let's do the exact same thing for the other one. So variable party, now let's make it somewhere here. So let's say 50, 150, five. And let's set the party to the party sticker. And let's make the scale and not make it visible at the start. 
So party scale, let's say 0 0.23, and the party sprite visible is false. Now, if you notice here, how do I make these sprites appear? Now let's go to user input. This is where the good stuff comes into. Let's go to control and you see conditionals. So if something is true, then that thing will happen. Or if someone does something, then this will work. Otherwise, that doesn't work if the else statement. But for this one, we're not going to use else statements. So how do you make it so that when a user presses an object with their mouse, it disappears? For that, let's go to world. And you'll see if mouse did move, we don't want that. Mouse down. We want if mouse pressed over. So if your mouse presses over the sprite, and specifically, now we have to find the if mouse presses over slice of cake, which is that this variable. Never mind, it's cupcake. Let's do cupcake first. We want to click in an order from cupcake to shortcake. Now, what happens? We want to make it disappear. So the same thing we did where we made the dog sprite visible, not visible at the start. We're going to make this one disappear once you click it. So we're going to do cupcake visible equals false. Now, let's see what happens. If you click on this, look, it disappears. Click on the cupcake again, it disappears. Now, we want to do the same. Now, let's make a variable. <clears throat> For this one, let's make a variable. It's called cake count, okay? <clears throat> let's put it somewhere here. Let's make it cake count. So we're going to go to variables and do variable x equals and name it cake count. And now we want to start with zero. <clears throat> All right. Now what happens here? I want. I want the cake count to go up every time we click it. So we want it to be two, since there's two objects here to click, two um, cakes to eat. So once you click the second one, then the, that birthday cake I showed should appear. <clears throat> and now, let's do that. So if you see here, I'll show you. Here, the variables, I did the cake count equals cake count plus one. So once it becomes three, then the stuff will appear. <clears throat> Same thing here. So we're going to do a cake count. And now we want to make it plus one every time you click it. Well, we only click it one time and it will disappear. So we're going to do cake count equals cake count plus one. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's do the same thing for the shortcake or slice of cake. So, same thing, if mouse pressed over slice of cake, then we're going to go here to sprites and do visible. So, then your slice of cake it's not going to be visible anymore. So visible equals false. <clears throat> and same thing, we're going to do cake count equals the cake count plus one. All right. Now, what do we want? <clears throat> we want the birthday cake to appear but how do we do that so when our cake count is one and one 
So when our cake count equals two, we want that birthday cake to appear. So we're gonna go to if, and do if, and we're gonna go to math, if cake count is greater than or equal to two, <clears throat> Then we want the birthday cake sprite, so cake visible to appear. So we want this to be visible after we click both cakes. Let's try it. Click this. So what do you say? Right now? Yeah, there we go. You just have to click it one time. Let's say four, because right now it's saying it's more than one click if you actually click your mouse. See there, four. We got it. We got our cake to appear. <clears throat> Let me actually make that a bit smaller. Let's try that. So click the cake, click the cake, and look, those two cakes disappear and this one appears. Now that we use conditionals to make that, let's make so that you can actually shake the present and then it will open up. <clears throat> so for that, we're gonna go, as you see here, if mouse did move, as you see here. So if you move your mouse towards the present, then, <clears throat> we're going to make a new variable just like we did with the cake count we're going to do shake count this time so we're going to do variable shake count and of course it's going to be equal zero at the first part <clears throat> all right now we're going to make sure now we want to make the rotation we want to make it like rotate after we shake it so we're going to do rotation here. There's a rotation here, sprite rotation, which rotates a sprite. So we're gonna do present rotation equals, let's put it to a random number. We wanna shake back and forth. The Y should be the same, but the X should be different. <clears throat> so let's do negative five or five. Let's try that. See, look, if we're shaking our mouse, the present shakes like that. That's user input. That's an example of user input. Now we want the shake count to be a certain number. So shake count equals shake count plus one. <clears throat> or the number, I'll show you here, the number of shake count is going to be equal to <clears throat> one and you can set it to how many times how long the user has to shake it for you can do it like thousand or something if they want to do it that might get well uninterested but or you can do like a hundred which is not actually that much so shake count equals shake count plus one this makes so that it keeps track of the number of times you shake it now let's make it so that if your shake count is greater than or equal to something, so shake, we want it, the present to disappear, but the prizes to be inside up here, which were that dog and the party sticker. <clears throat> and we want these to disappear as well. So if shake count, let's say 100, okay, then let's set that present box to not visible. We don't want to see the box anymore. So present visible is false. And we want, let's get our two more sprites left. We want our party sticker to appear and our dog to appear. And we don't want 
these two to still be here because you already ate them but you can keep the cake to be there if you want but since let's try it if we shake 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 look see the present disappears and we have these now let's actually make the scale bigger And let's make the party sticker to be 0 0.6. And let's put the X to be like 300. Let's try that. So click this first, then click that, and the birthday cake appears. Then keep shaking until, yeah, your mouse. <clears throat> now let's put this to... All right, now shake, 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 shake. Keep shaking the present till it opens. There. It's for 8113. Let's try that. Now, you do have to experiment a bit with the oh, with the number of, with the position you want it to be. There you go. <clears throat> now let's put the scale to 0 0.5, okay? Now, you got that. You got the present to disappear once you shake it a greater number of times or equal to now it looks boring here we want it to make it rotate or shake and stuff like that so what I'm gonna do is if you see here where I did the rotation with the meals so same thing here I wanna go here And make the dog, let's say, make it shake back and forth. But first, let's make the party sticker rotate. So, party rotation equals, now here, if you put a positive number, then it will shake clockwise. If you do it a negative number, it will say counterclockwise. So, party rotation, we want it to be party rotation plus one now if you see that let's click this click that shake 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 and look see it starts rotating let's make it a bit faster though all right shake 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 and look i think that will be good <clears throat> and as you see and now we got the party sticker to rotate. Now let's make the dog move back and forth. That's optional. But to do that, I want the X position to be the same. So dog X equals, now let's put that to a random number so it rotates horizontally. Let's say negative five to two. Okay, now shake, shake, shake. And if, remember, the reason why it's here and not there is because you have to put the X position to be either the same as your dog X. So I'll show you. Here, I put 285. So that has to be either 285 or something greater than or less than. Let's just try that. Shake, shake, shake. And look, see, now there is. Now, that is part three, how to make user input and how to add more sprites. And that spices it up. I'll see you next time. Peace for part three.